The Galaxy Tab A8 has quite a few really good features that are just either hidden in the settings or some people just don't know about. In today's video, I'm going to show you some of the tips and tricks that you should definitely know if you just got the Galaxy Tab A8. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, if you're tired of your screen always shutting off right when you get ready to use it, all you got to do is go into settings. And then under display, just scroll down until you see screen timeout. And then you've got the option of 15 seconds all the way up to 30 minutes. One thing that I like to do is always turn off the adaptive brightness. If you go up into the notification shade, click this little arrow and you can turn off where it says adaptive brightness. I don't know about you, but I sort of like to control the screen brightness or just keep it the same all the time instead of it going too bright or too dim. Now let's say you want your home screen to be all apps, similar to what you would see on an iPad. All you have to do is go to your home screen settings and then choose home screen only. Then when you swipe up on the home screen, you can search for apps, files, nearby restaurants, or whatever you're trying to find. Another thing you may want to change is how your navigation is. If you go into settings and just search NAV, navigation bar should just pop right up. You've got the option here to choose buttons, swipe gestures, and you can even change the order of the buttons which is always a good thing to do. Samsung always likes to have those backwards. Personally, I like three button navigation. It just feels a little bit faster than gestures, but obviously that's gonna be personal preference. One other thing that's nice, if you're using your tablet at night or just in a darker room, if you swipe down on the notification shade, there should be a dark mode button right on there. And that's gonna change everything that's white to black, including your settings, menus, all that kind of stuff. It just makes it a little bit easier on the eyes. Even the search bar there is sort of a dark gray. Then to switch it back, just go to notification shade and you can turn it off. Now, if you like tablets, phones, and other tech, consider hitting that subscribe button. I try to cover as much on the channel as possible and I'll be posting more videos this year than ever before. Now, if you're used to other Samsung devices, you may want to turn on the edge panel to get more shortcuts over on the side of the screen. Just go into display, edge panels, and from there you can choose between apps, people, smart select, tasks, weather, tools, and clipboard. Nice thing is you can choose more than one or go crazy and choose all of them. Then you can even adjust the location of the handle, how big or transparent it is, and even change the color. Then once you swipe over from the edge, right there's all of your shortcuts. Now if for some reason you feel things on the Galaxy Tab are a little too small, no problem. Just go to Display Settings, Screen Zoom, and there you can make things as large as you want or as small. I mean just look at the difference from smallest all the way up to largest. Another really cool feature that you definitely should try out is go to settings, wallpaper services, and then choose dynamic lock screen. Click the little cog icon and pick your favorite thing you want to see this week, like dogs, landscapes. Now, every time you wake up your tablet, you're going to see a different dog waiting for you or maybe some vacation ideas. Let's say there's an app you want to get to really quick. All you got to do is go into settings, advanced features, then you're going to see the side key. Here you can choose to double press the power button to quickly open up the camera, or you can pick pretty much any app that you want to quickly access at any time just by hitting the power button twice. Because hey, who wants to waste time trying to figure out where the Netflix app is when you can just double press the power button anytime you want. One feature I don't know if everyone knows about on this tablet is you can actually pick different modes on how the speakers are going to sound by just going into the sound settings, sound quality, effects, and then where it says Dolby Atmos, you can choose between movie, music, voice, or let it choose automatically. 
Now, if you're going to be watching YouTube videos a lot, you're definitely going to want to make sure that you're watching it at the highest resolution possible, especially if you're at home using Wi-Fi all the time. If you tap on the video once that you're watching, tap the three little dots over there in the corner, choose quality, advanced, and then pick the top one, which is 1080p. Now all of your videos are going to look nice and sharp. And then probably something that everyone should know with any tablet is going to be how to connect a controller, headphones, keyboard, and mouse. Now it's going to be pretty much the same thing when connecting Bluetooth devices. Just go to your settings, connections, and then go ahead and tap on Bluetooth. And that's where you're going to see the nearby list of Bluetooth items that you can connect to. Now, even though you can use a micro SD card on this tablet, nice thing is you can connect an external drive through the charging port as long as it's USB-C. Then all you do is go into your files. Let's say you've got a couple images, just click and drag. You'll see down here that you can copy the files. Then you just go down to where it says USB storage and you can copy the files right there. The nice thing is about the drive I have here by SanDisk, it actually comes with an adapter so you could plug this just right onto the end and then have a regular USB connector if you wanted to connect this to your PC. I know some people on Samsung devices like it when you tap the screen and it makes that little popping sound. Now let's say you don't want people to know how fast you type or you just don't like the sound of you tapping the screen everywhere or you just want your tablet to be a little more quiet. All you gotta do is go into sound settings, system sound, and there's a toggle for touch interactions that you can turn on and off. The nice thing is if you wanna do split screen, it's actually pretty simple to do on here. All you do is tap down here on recent apps, then just tap on your recent app icons. And you've got different options here. You can open in split screen view, or you can even open pop up view. You can also lock this app so you don't accidentally close it. Then you can use just about any other app there on the other side of the screen. Then you can adjust right here in the center on whether you want it to be wider or skinnier, pretty much whatever screen size you need. And then once you go to advanced features, if you look under motions and gestures, you've got a few different options here. Double tap to turn on the screen. You can also double tap to turn off the screen. You can also cover the screen to mute and palm swipe to capture. So hopefully this video gave you a few things to think about. Maybe a couple things that you didn't know before. Overall, this is a really nice affordable tablet by Samsung, but it's always more fun once you dig into the details and learn how to do some more stuff on it. So if you've made it this far into the video, you may want to say thanks by subscribing and don't forget to give a thumbs up if this video was helpful. This is Brian from Fishbee Productions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm.